Um, these are property tax rates, so not strictly physical uh, infrastructure, but relates to uh, sites and, and business development. This is looking at Holyoke compared to other uh, municipalities in, in the region, as well as Boston and Worcester for some other comparison points. Uh, the one that jumps out that's brought up that a lot of people in this room probably know about is that the business, commercial, and industrial property tax rates uh, on a, um, uh, you know, uh, value basis uh, are relatively high. Uh, Springfield is actually higher. I think they're the highest in the state uh, right now. Um, that's, that's, uh, that's, a, that's a challenge. Uh, West Springfield is pretty high, over almost 35 cents um, uh, there. Um, so, uh, you know, definitely lower in some places like uh, Ludlow, uh, South Hadley, uh, Northampton on, on the business uh, side. And, you know, Boston and Worcester are still high, but not quite as high uh, there. So let's uh, go through what, what our draft findings are and in terms of the SWAT here, strong fiber uh, uh, optic and broadband infrastructure uh, in the region and, and here in Holyoke, uh, low land costs as well as low housing prices. So this is where I probably should get my uh, lower housing prices uh, into the uh, demographic section perhaps, or, or we'll think about that. Uh, there, there certainly is some site availability and ability to combine uh, parcels. Um, strong regional water supply came up in interviews. Uh, the canals uh, for cooling is, is a, in some cases a specialty need. Uh, a private developer interest in ownership in Holyoke that is different than when I started doing some work in this uh, city about three years ago. It's, you know, uh, I think you and I were talking about prospective buyers about three years ago and, and now we have real uh, owners who are actively looking at redeveloping a number of different uh, uh, properties. Um, and some capabilities in Holyoke in terms of information and cybersecurity and, and, and that ties in to some extent with ISO New England. Um, it's, it's a little bit of a complicated one that we're still digging into. Uh, on the weakness side, sites in Center City, uh, many of them are dilapidated and lack, uh, well, I put curb appeal. Uh, I think to some there's overwhelming blight. Uh, we talked to some state corporate uh, location uh, leaders who have a list of priority sites for the state. There is one in Holyoke, and it is not in Center City. It is a Greenfield site uh, along 91. Um, so for some businesses that are ready to go, you know, tomorrow, uh, you know, it's, it's an obstacle. Um, so uh, some real and perhaps even perceived uh, environmental uh, issues. Um, the property tax rates is, is, a, is a challenge. Um, and, well, I guess where I'd like to go uh, quickly is towards the opportunities. And, and one of the um, thoughts that's come up in a few different meetings, and it's, and it's hard to know exactly how to present this, but uh, this, some, of the, some of the successes, Evergreen Solar uh, notwithstanding, at Devon's, um, in terms of their focus on doing pre-permitted sites, uh, having some targeted uses. There's both an industrial and more of a mixed use and high tech area. Uh, and, and, the, and the ability to have a, a, a single point of contact for business development opportunities. I think there's a lot that <coughs> perhaps could be, you know, learned or taken from that uh, and applied in an innovation district uh, concept uh, here in Holyoke. I mean, we're talking a reconversion of a military base in, in a more rural area. Here we're talking more urban, but, but I think some of the lessons learned could be helpful. Um, idea is to um, extend the, the TIF. Right now it's about a five-year, or it is a five-year uh, TIF for opportunity for new businesses. Uh, in our conversations, it's not sufficient. Uh, businesses are looking for something more like 15 to 20 to help mitigate some of the property tax uh, 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 disadvantages. Uh, opportunity to work with partners like the railroad, like Holyoke Gas and Electric, um, perhaps to prototype some industrial facilities and sites. Not, not everything in, in the district, I, I don't want to overemphasize the, the industrial side of things, but there could be some areas that would be targeted, could be some opportunities to take some sites 
uh, and and you know rehab them and show you know what what could be done there because uh, right now if you take someone to some of the sites you, you're not going to get the interest uh, bundle the assets uh, I mean that's an overarching statement between the energy the fiber optics the low land cost uh, talent supply entrepreneurial um, support uh, okay and then so on the threat side you know, funding to improve the sites to a level that would be attractive to site selectors. I mean, it's easy for me to throw out a Devons example, but with Devons, as I understand, the state legislature agreed to give uh, Devons about 200 million to, to engage in that uh, uh, project over a number of years. So, uh, 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 you know, the funding um, uh, fiscal situation in the state is, is a challenging one, so. Uh, Potential or political challenge of lowering the long-term property tax rates for business. Um, I guess that's both a, a threat and, a, and an opportunity. Um, and, and one of the things that we put here is that uh, yeah, we, we think there should be some focus in terms of improvements rather than trying to improve every site all at once. That um, we need to find some successes. We need to kind of you know build and that it's, it's too overwhelming to, to, to do the entire thing, you know, all right away. But having some vision for what can be done, uh, perhaps making some choices on, on some targeted uses in parts of the district. Um, it doesn't all need to be a certain type of use. Um, uh, uh, could, could make sense as we go forward. Any questions, thoughts? Um, yeah, I have, I have two quick thoughts. I mean, one is something that I imagine someone else would say, if I didn't say it, is that I think this is almost a perfect example of where um, your discussion of, of the SWOT analysis has to be viewed in the context of, all, of, of this process running parallel to their Bruno Newell plan. Because, and I say that because um, just all the time I've spent in Holyoke already, and, and thinking about some of the things that were described earlier as assets or challenges the city has, if you don't put this in the context also of a parallel community development, community services, community assets, parkland, sort of, you know, uh, the, the, the identification of needs, assets, and opportunities in that area, then this looks like it, it leaves out a lot of the, lot of the things that um, really Barry was saying earlier and some of the things you were talking earlier about demographics of saying, how do we build the future? How do we engage the community that's here? How do we engage kids and families in the future of Holyoke? Now that's not, that. by the way, I want to make clear, the reason I'm saying this is not to criticize what you have up here. What I'm saying is that as, as one discusses what this process is, is, is uh, the context of this process, yeah. the context has to be, has to be always running tightly with this broader question of what are the community development challenges and opportunities in Holyoke generally, and how does that process also work with this to make sure that neighborhoods and families and everybody are coming together even as you're identifying opportunity sites for industrial commercial activity. Having said that, my second point was going to be say, even though you've mentioned it two or three times, I can't echo strongly enough the need to build upon the interest that the private sector has shown in Holyoke by ad identifying opportunity sites and creating more development ready sites in the future. Be and I say that because have, now that we've worked through a long process with the universities in, in uh, getting to where we are today on the center. You know, they've been wonderful partners to work with. I hope they'd say the same for us. Um, but my gosh, if you had somebody knocking on Alan Blair's or Kathy's door to come in and you didn't have places in which you already are at a higher level of site assembly or remediation or things like that, it'd be very hard to move at the speed of business, you know, for the next company that comes knocking on the door. And so I think that it's, it's definitely an opportunity it's also something that requires sustained attention. Thank you. Um, I, I think it's really important to add as a strength, uh, the, it's, it ties into what Eric said and what uh, Kathy's doing on the urban renewal plan, is the urban core. I think uh, one of the things that is going to be critical for businesses in the coming years is quality of life uh, in both in two sectors. One is, of course, younger people who are looking for that urban walkable sort of cool environment. And the other is actually retirees 
who um, make up a large portion of the population who are looking to move into downtowns because they're more convenient. And I think the complement to that as a strength is that in Holyoke, we've already seen it, that there's really an organic growth at a smaller scale, which is both local and regional and has the potential to pull beyond the region, but it's smaller companies. Um, and uh, I think that's a really good complement, not only for um, smaller companies, but for large companies, because when they come to look at a place and they see a vibrant environment or an environment that's growing where there are good restaurants and there are also small companies around, that's an attraction for them, for a larger business to bring their employees down. Thank you. Great. Here, sir. 